subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Scalloped Hammerhead Shark. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. <coughs> oh, this? I found this seashell at the beach. I've got a whole box full of seashells. If you put the seashell close to your ear, you can hear the sea. Here, listen. <coughs> it sounds just like the sea, doesn't it? <coughs> What's the matter, Hero? Hmm? I think there's something underneath the seashells. It's a fish. Look at the shape of its head. It's so weird. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find any information about the fish? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The fish you found is actually a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark gets its name from the unusual shape of its head, which looks like a hammer. The shark's head helps it to find prey. There are special sense organs spread out over the wide head of the scalloped hammerhead shark. These organs help the shark to pick up electrical signals that are given off by animals underwater. Wow! Just like a radar! So, what animals does the scalloped hammerhead shark eat? Scalloped hammerhead sharks mostly eat fish like sardines and herring, and sometimes animals like squid and octopus. Bigger hammerhead sharks even eat smaller sharks. But since the shark you found is still young, it prefers to eat small fish and shrimp. By the way, scalloped hammerhead sharks live in the warm tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Hmm. The pond in our garden isn't big enough for the shark to swim in. We should bring the shark back to its home in the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the ocean, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark looks a little cramped in that tank. There you go, little friend. Much better now. Is it safe to swim with the shark, Ranger Rocky? Scalloped hammerhead sharks normally do not attack people unless they are threatened. However, you should still keep your distance, especially from the adult sharks. If you want to find the young shark's home, you should keep a lookout for seashores. Young scalloped hammerhead sharks prefer to live in large groups near the seashores of islands. This is because the water is shallow there, which means the water is less deep. The shallow water helps keep large predators away. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. What is it, Hero? Hey, where did the shark go? Let me have a look. I see the hammerhead shark. It's chasing shrimp underwater. Oh no, the shark is caught in the net. The net must have come from that boat over there. I think it's a shrimp trawler. What's a shrimp trawler? A shrimp trawler is a fishing boat designed to catch shrimp. Unfortunately, other marine animals are sometimes caught in the nets by accident. These marine animals are called bycatch. We've got to save our friend from becoming bycatch. Katie and Hero, you stay here and watch the jeep, okay? What 
do you think, Hero? Should Leo have all the fun alone? Was close. Thanks, Katie and Hero. I could not have done it without you two. No problem, Leo. It was actually Hero's idea. <laughs> we did it! We found the young hammerhead sharks home. Great work, everyone! Yay! Hooray! a young scalloped hammerhead shark in our garden. We learned that scalloped hammerhead sharks come from the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. So we went to the ocean and brought the young shark back to its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The leafy sea dragon. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea, where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go! See you downstairs! Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the beach. Ah, I see you have a leafy sea dragon with you today. It was in my marine aquarium, Ranger Rocky. I thought it was a piece of seaweed. Leafy sea dragons use their appearance to help them hide from predators. They live in or around seaweed beds and seagrass meadows, so marine animals don't notice them. Healthy leafy sea dragons can even change their color to look more like the seaweed they are hiding in. Leafy sea dragons can swim, but very slowly. They use the fins on their necks and tails to move and turn. Despite being slow swimmers, they can travel long distances to look for food. Leafy sea dragons are always looking for food. 
They have no stomach, which means food goes through their bodies quickly. Because of that, they have to eat constantly. That is why it is not easy for leafy sea dragons to survive outside of their natural home. That's one of the reasons why we're taking this leafy sea dragon back to its home, Ranger Rocky. Look for an area where the seawater is clean. If the water is polluted, the seaweed and seagrass in the water will die. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Ranger Rocky, you got here fast. What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close. A storm just hit this area and it washed a heap of seaweed ashore. Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed, so they often get washed ashore with the seaweed when the waters get rough. Oh no! So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly so that they'll survive. We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Good job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. Look at how much seagrass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The mola. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Look, Hero, it's a beautiful day. Let's soak up the sun. Ah, isn't this nice, Hero? Ranger Rocky. Hello, junior ranger. What do you have at the back of your truck, Ranger Rocky? It's a fish known as the mola. I'm bringing it back to the ocean. Oh, excuse me. Ranger Rocky speaking. Oh my, I'll come over right away. I have to rescue an elephant that has its foot caught in a trap. Can you junior rangers help me return the mola to its natural home? Yes, I can, but where does the mola live? Thank you, Leo. I'll call you again. Ranger Rocky, wait! Where do molas live? You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, mola! Hi, Katie. What have you found out about the mola? Hi, Leo. The mola is also known as the ocean sunfish, and its scientific name is Mola Mola. The word mola is a Latin word for millstone. A millstone is a circular stone that is used to grind grains. The mola sure looks like a millstone. Is it as heavy as one? 
An adult mola can weigh over 2,000 kilograms and can grow up to 4 meters tall. However, it has a very small mouth for a fish its size. Molas eat some small fish and squid, but its favorite food is jellyfish. Jellyfish normally sting, but molas are one of the few animals that can eat jellyfish without getting hurt. Wow, that's amazing! But Ranger Rocky wants us to bring it back to its natural home. So where is that? Well, the mola is also called the ocean sunfish because it lives in temperate and tropical waters of every ocean in the world. Hmm, we have to bring this mola back to its home in the tropical waters. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Junior Rangers, how are things going? We've just reached the coast and we're about to go into the water, Ranger Rocky. That's great, Leo. As you might know, the mola is also called an ocean sunfish. That's because molas like to sunbathe near the surface of the water. They warm themselves up before diving deeper into colder waters to look for food. Unfortunately, the mola's rough skin houses many parasites which are tiny creatures that live on or inside another animal or plant. To remove these parasites, molas swim among coral reefs, where small fish live. These small fish eat the parasites on the mola's bodies. So if you want to find this mola a good home in the ocean, try to look for a place with coral reefs. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. This looks like a nice spot to let the mola out. There you go, mola. Swim away and find your friends. Look, the mola is enjoying the sun. Oh no, those seagulls are pecking at the mola. Let's chase them away. Shoot, Shoot seagulls, seagulls, go away. Go away. Now there are more seagulls. Let's throw out some breadcrumbs. Maybe that will distract the seagulls. Yes, let's try that. <laughs> it doesn't work. Katie and Hero, let's take out our propellers and chase these seagulls away. Ranger, Ranger Rocky! Rocky. Do not stop the seagulls, Junior Rangers. They are helping the mola. Besides small fish, molas often seek help from seagulls to remove parasites from their bodies. Then let's not disturb the seagulls anymore. Goodbye, mola mola. We did it. We found jellyfish for the mola to eat. Great work, everyone. Yay! Yay! Rocky left a mola in our garden. We learned that small fish and seagulls help to get rid of parasites that live on molas, and that jellyfish are the mola's favorite food. So we brought the mola back to the ocean where it can eat a lot of jellyfish. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. <laughs>